All right, Shabani. Well, it is safe to say the stock market gathered a whole lot of steam heading into the year end with the Dow gaining more than 18 percent and the S&P more than 22 percent since those July lows. The run higher has a whole lot of economists now raising growth forecasts for 2011 with the consensus for GDP expansion now north of 3 percent. But our next guest isn't buying it and says there are too many headwinds ahead. Peter Schiff is president of Euro Pacific Capital. Peter, it's great to have you on our afternoon program today. Thanks great for coming in on the tough weather today. All right, people are feeling better. They're spending retail sales strong for this season. Economists, as we just said, upgrading their outlooks, but you're not buying it. What's uh, your no. concern? I mean, first of all, the economy is not what's growing. It's the money supply, and that's inflation. And so the reason stock prices are rising, the reason oil prices are rising and uh, other commodity prices are rising is because the government is destroying the value of our money. And so as money loses value, you need more money to buy stocks. You need more money to buy oil. That's all that's happening. So we're not getting richer. We're actually getting poorer. Okay, but conventional wisdom, right? U.S. Treasuries never default. Greenback is the go-to, the safe haven. Are we in a sort of mindset shift here? Yeah, well, that conventional wisdom is going to be shattered. And usually when you have a consensus, it's wrong. The idea that the U.S. dollar is safe or some type of safe haven is wrong. I mean, we are the epicenter of the global financial problems. We are the nation that is in the most debt. Uh, we have an economy that is completely dependent on artificially low interest rates, on the ability to export dollars and import real goods. But this is creating consequences all around the world. Look at China that raised interest rates over the weekend. They're trying to fight off inflation that they're importing from the United States. This is the consequence of their dollar peg. I think in next year, in 2011, they might rethink that and allow their currency to rise, which will put even more upward pressure on prices in the United States uh, for consumer goods and interest rates. But don't you think with China, you want, since China's the global growth engine, you want a strong China right now. So if you're raising interest rates to prevent that economy from overheating, it might be good. Rising tides, in a sense, lifts all boats. Well, you, China's economy is going to be strong. Raising interest rates right now is not going to stop the inflation if they keep expanding the money supply. The reason there's inflation in China is because they print a lot of money to buy up all the dollars that we keep sending them because we don't send them products. But ultimately, that's going to stop. But when it does, we're going to find out to the extent that we've been riding on the China gravy train. We've been getting a free ride off of their productivity. They're lending us their savings. They're supplying us their merchandise. And we're enjoying a standard of living that is unwarranted by our productivity. Let's drill down on U.S. inflation, though. Why, then, where is this disconnect where the Federal Reserve says core inflation, the CPI reading, is still well below their unofficial comfort zone? Yeah. You're shaking your hands. <laughs> this is like your shtick, Peter, right? Well, I mean, is well, there the, anything that gives you any sense of optimism look, out there? Look, ben Bernanke is either a liar or he's incompetent or he's a little of both. But this is all potentially propaganda. Uh, the government, the Federal Reserve in particular, does not want to tell the truth that inflation is running out of control and they're the ones that are what creating it. What is real it. inflation right now? Well, who knows? I mean, you, you have no How accurate measure. Out, but I think you have to look at prices. I mean, look at prices that have never been this high, like copper at record highs, soybeans at record highs, uh, sugar at record highs, but look at corn at record highs. It's still challenged. But that doesn't have anything to do with it. But, but that's where the slack in the economy no, is coming from. It's not a function of slack. If you create money out of thin air, prices have to rise to compensate for all that new money. You know, there is a consequence. The government is spending all this money, huge deficits. How do we pay for it? If the government is not taxing us, they're taking our purchasing power by creating inflation. That's all the Federal Reserve is doing. But they want to keep up the pretense that there's no inflation so they can justify keeping interest rates really low. Eventually, what they're going to do is they're going to start to try to convince us that a little inflation is good for us, that this shows that their policies are working. But it's not true. I mean, you, you, you're not going to get a, a little bit of inflation any more than you can be a little bit pregnant. <laughs> I know about that. I'm chuckling. Okay, so interest rates, 3.5% about on the 10-year yield. I heard you last week saying that, just look at the bond market, it's screaming. Well, I don't know what your verbatim was, but basically that the U.S. is in a lot of trouble down the road. Maybe this tax cut extension is good for the economy short term, but longer term we have some debt and deficit yeah, issues. Mean, they just delayed, right, the federal deficit sure. for another week. I mean, what's the solution in your well, view? Well, you know, the real Achilles heel is interest rates. The only reason that the federal government is able to pay its bills is because interest rates are so low, the federal government has a giant teaser rate on the national debt. But as rates rise, the government is not going to have the ability uh, to service the debt, let alone pay back the principal, unless the Fed comes in What's and monetizes. What's the time frame? When is that going to happen? That, do you think, well, it sounds like you think the U.S. is going to default. Well, we're going to default one way or the other. When? There's two ways we can default. We can just honestly do it by not paying, 
or we can print money and pay back our creditors with monopoly money, which is probably more likely. But I think sometime in 2011, if we make it out of 2011, maybe 2012, that we're going to have a crisis. You know, they didn't have a crisis in Ireland last year. They still had all this debt. What happens was interest rates rose because the bond market got nervous. Well, the bond market is going to get nervous. They're going to start to realize the position that they're in. Either they're not going to get their money back or they're going to get paid in, in inflated dollars. And interest rates are going to rise sharply in the United States. That's going to destroy the ability of the federal government to pay its bills. That's going to crush U.S. homeowners that have mortgages, particularly adjustable rate mortgages. It's going to crush people that have credit card debt, auto loans, student loans. Our whole debt finance economy is going to come crumbling down the minute the cost of servicing that debt rises. So you love gold. You've loved gold forever as long as I've been watching you. Gold's having a great day today. Have you bought any of it during that Of course, that time? of course. But I'm curious what will encourage you, what will make you think twice and possibly sell gold? Well, I'm nowhere near that. I mean, we're going to have to have rational... Where is gold going to top out then? Well, I, as, at a minimum, I think gold is going to go to $5,000 an ounce. It could go much higher than that. Um, what would make me turn bearish on gold and bullish on the dollar would be a complete 180 degree change in policy. We'd have to have much higher interest rates, not these 0% interest rates. We'd have to see real meaningful reductions in government spending to the point that we produced a balanced budget or a budget surplus. I'd have to see lots of deregulation going on so that we can have a free market economy, so that we can move back towards manufacturing and good production and away from gimmicks, you know, financial services and other uh, service sector jobs. You know, we need to turn this economy around. We need to empower a new industrial revolution, but to do that, we have to dismantle this social welfare state that we've erected. We have to get rid of all the central government planning and move back to free market forces. Unfortunately, we are a long way from there. You know, we're still digging the ditch a lot deeper, which means I think gold prices and other commodity prices still have a long way to run. And I still want to own those commodities. I want to own companies that are involved in those commodities. And unfortunately, I want to invest as far away from the U.S. as I can, stay away from U.S. consumers, uh, either because they're they, they're spending money or they can't pay back their bills. So you want to be invest in the emerging markets. You want to be uh, focusing on Asia, focusing on some of the countries that have a lot of the natural resources that they can export. Okay, Peter, thank you for the discussion. Wish sure. you had more time. Sure. Have a great New Year. Thanks again. You too. All right, Shabani.